Hey guys, I just want to quickly go over a solution to a problem that has come up in one of the subdivision modeling videos that I uploaded not long ago. And one of those lessons uh, involved this object here, which was the cylinder that used the sweep nerb in order to assist in modeling the top portion here of the handle. Now the issue that arose in this tutorial was the bulge and how do you get rid of it? Now to be honest with you, this was something that I was going to address but completely forgot to do it. So that would be totally my fault, but I'm going to go ahead and address that problem now and show you how to fix it. Okay, so if we look at this from a side view, you can see where the bulge is at. You can see the top of the cylinder here goes straight across, but then up here around where this handle is extruded out of the top, you can see it kind of bulges upward. So let me go find the little doodle tool again. All right, so here we have the straight part of the cylinder. But notice how this here is kind of rounded up and it shouldn't be like that. You can see there's a bit of a bulge there and that just doesn't look very natural at all. Now I went ahead of time and already modeled a second cylinder with the problem that has been fixed. So I'm gonna unhide that. Okay, so there is the second cylinder here on the left. And if I turn off the first one and go back to a side view here, you can see that there is just a slight bit of rounding there, but the problem of that bulge has been completely resolved. See, there's no longer a bulge there. All right, so how do you get rid of it? Well, it's a matter of not enough subdivisions in the geometry. So one way that these problems like this can usually be dealt with is just by adding some loop cuts and tightening those cuts up and making them closer to the extrusion of the handle. Now, like I said, sometimes you can do that, not all of the time. In this case, it's not going to work. Let me show you. So if I turn the hypernerve off, you can see what the geometry looks like. We've got one loop cut here, and I'll tell you what, I'll go to line mode and I'll highlight these for you. You can see we've got one loop cut there that goes around, and we also have this one here. So these two loops of edges here are acting as controls for how tight or how loose the corner is going to be up against this extrusion where it comes out of the top of the cylinder. So if I were to select this one here on the back side and we turn the hypernerb on. Now watch this area here where the bulge is at. If I take this loop cut and move it further away, notice how the problem increases. It blends in more, but obviously you can see that it does ramp up and it's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to go and be straight and then go up. But you can see now that instead of going down and then being completely horizontal, it's kind of slowly ramping downward. So let's do the opposite. Let's take this cut and push it over as far as we can go. And we don't want to go too close. So maybe about right there. All right, now that kind of looks better, but we still have the bulge. Look at that. There's still a little bit of a bulge there. It doesn't look right. So sometimes you can get away with adding a secondary loop cut to help enforce the first one. So we'll go to the knife tool in loop mode and we'll make a secondary cut there. Now notice that by making the second one, it's now flattened this out more. So if I undo that, then make the cut again, you can see the change that it made in there. Now that looks a lot better. Now let's try that on the front. Let's take this loop cut here. I'll just pull that one forward. And then we'll make an additional loop cut there. 
Now just by making those two additional cuts and taking the original ones and pulling them in tighter, looking at this from a side view, it appears as though that we've solved the problem. But let's look at this from a perspective view. Uh-oh, looks like we've run into a little bit of a problem. Do you see the problem? Right in here, we've got these nasty artifacts and these weird looking bulges and that doesn't look right at all. And if we take a look at the geometry, you can kind of see why. The problem is that we have these elongated polygons that are causing an issue. Right there, right there, and we also have those two there. Now they are quads, They're, they are four-sided faces, but because they're elongated, where this point comes way out here and is stretched out, it's causing some artifacting in the geometry. So making these additional loop cuts and tightening them up is not going to work in this case. So the only way to solve this problem is we need to introduce more segments or more subdivisions in the cylinder before we make it editable. So remember when we first made this cylinder here, it had eight segments. And for a lot of things that you'll create that are cylindrical in shape, eight is a good number to start with. However, for this, because we're encountering this problem, we're going to need to take that number and double it up just to ensure that we have enough. So what I did was I made this second cylinder here and I doubled up the segments to 16. Now take a look at the geometry up here at the top. Remember those four polygons that were over here on the original, the first cylinder here, the original one? See how they're elongated? But look at these over here on this one. These are not elongated. These look much cleaner and much nicer. And when we turn the hypernerve on, no artifacts, no bulges. Everything looks really good. So basically that's all you have to do to solve that problem is just to double up on your subdivisions in the cylinder. So let's do that really quick. So let's create a cylinder and I'll push this one off over here on this side. We're going to change the orientation to plus X, make the radius 100, turn off the caps, and I'm just going to line that up with the other two. All right, now by default, the cylinder has a setting of 36 for the rotational segments. And the first time we did this, in the very first part of the uh, tutorial, we set the rotation segments to 8. Because 8, at the time, seemed like it would be enough. And when we apply that to the hypernerb, we get some really nice rounding and everything looks good. But, of course, we can't use 8 because 8 is not giving us enough because those top polygons are being stretched too much. So we want to take the segments for the cylinder and we want to take that and double it. So 8 times 2 is 16. So now we have 16 segments. So now we can use a reference spline and I have one here, a circle reference spline and we can use that to line up with our cylinder. So I'm going to take this, drop it as a child of the cylinder and then I'm just going to use the PSR command that's the position, scale, and rotation. What that does is it centers everything out to its parent. So, so this circle spline is a child of the cylinder, and when you use the PSR command, it will center it out to the exact position, scale, and rotation of its parent, in this case, the cylinder. So of course, again, I have mine docked over here in the palette, but to get to that, you need to go to character, and I think it might have changed here for R13. Okay, it's under Character, Commands, Reset, PSR. So that's where that command is at. Now we can take that out. And what I want to do is just pull that up. And this particular circle spline, the radius is 35. And I've changed the intermediate points to uniform and set the number down to 1 to give us 8 segments on the spline. 
All right, so we'll just pull that over towards the front like we have here on these other two. And what I want to do is I want to make some cuts here. So notice that there's a little bit of a gap between the, the bottom and the top points here on the circle spline and the segment here, the subdivision line or this edge on the cylinder. Notice that the spline point here is not lining up. There's a little bit of a gap right in there. So what we want to do is we want to replicate that gap for the sides. So you're probably wondering, what, what in the world is he talking about? Well, don't worry, you know I'm going to explain it to you. So take the cylinder and make it editable. Knife tool will be in loop mode. And we don't want to make a cut there because that cut is exactly in line with that point on the side of the reference spline. But we don't want to do that. We want to put a little bit of a gap in there to mimic the gap that's down here. So I'm just going to eyeball this because it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect right now. So I think more than likely what I'll do is about there and about there. Now we have an even space gap around. Now we also need to make one directly in the center that lines up with the center points on the reference spline just like that. Okay, so now we can change the mode on the knife tool over to line. And we want to make a big X right through the middle of this. So what we want to do, just make an X through the middle. We'll go from the corner to the middle, back over to here. And we want to take that center point and select it. And we just want to use the bevel tool. And we want to bevel that out until it reaches somewhere about there. That should be just fine for now. Now if we were to look at this from a front view, notice that we've got a little bit of a problem here. That's not looking quite right. And the reason for that is because when we beveled, it kind of put these odd looking quads here in the middle of our shape. We can just take those and extrude those up. And then we can just delete them. And now everything back here, looking at it from a front view here, everything is nice and in line. All right, so now let's turn the hypernerve on. I'm going to hide these other two here because we don't really need to see them at the moment. Look at this from a side view. All right, so you can see that already just by doing that, just, just by adding those 16 segments, those rotational segments versus 8, you can already see just how much of a vast improvement it's already made. Now, if we want to tighten that up even more and alleviate more of that there, what we could do is just make some additional loop cuts with the knife tool. So we'll go into loop mode. And just to see where we need to cut this at, I'm going to turn the hypernerve off and we need to make one right about there. Turn the hypernerve back on and just by making that one you can see just how much better that one looks. And you can see that the bulge problem is pretty much gone. Not even there anymore. Alright, so I think that pretty much wraps this up. Just wanted to go over how to fix that bulge. A couple of users were asking about it and how to fix that problem. So hopefully this has kind of shown you how to do it. Now one thing that I would like to say is it's very important before you start modeling something like this that you visualize it in your mind and you try to picture exactly what it's going to look like and you need to, you need to practice at this because you're probably not going to get it at first. It's going to take a lot of trial and error to do this but you need to get yourself to a point where you can actually visualize and you can guess at how many segments you're going to need before you start modeling, especially when like using a cylinder like this where you have to model like a, like a handle or something coming out of it. Because sometimes you'll start modeling and you'll get halfway done with it and you've got hours into all of this modeling and you realize that you didn't give yourself enough segments or subdivisions and now you have to go back and redo it all over again. So that is something that is very important when you're modeling like this because you can actually give yourself too many segments because then if you have too many of them, 
now you've got way too much geometry and you're going to have to deal with all these points and edges and it just makes for a large mess. And then on the other side of that coin, you've got not enough geometry and not enough edges to work with like we have here in this example of the first cylinder here, which was giving us the problem with those elongated quads there, which was causing the problem of the bulge. So that about wraps up this lesson, and uh, I think that was about the only correction I had to do. So again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.